It all started way back in 1988 with this guy, Ken Kutargari, a Sony engineer. He had bought his daughter a Famicom and was less than impressed. He was convinced that he could make a better sound chip himself. So he personally designed sound chips in his own free time and only showed them to his boss after they were completed. Though many company members were furious that he did this, his boss allowed him to approach Nintendo with these sound chips, as it could bring in money for Sony. Nintendo was impressed with these sound chips, so signed a deal that Sony would develop the sound chips for the upcoming Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. Nintendo got to use Sony's SPC-700 sound chip, and as a part of the agreement, Sony would be able to develop a CD-ROM add-on for the Super Nintendo. Sony quickly began work on the Super Disc, which could play Sony CD-ROM games and Super Nintendo games. Nintendo increased their research into CD-ROM technology as well. In 1991, Nintendo realized that their 1988 deal with Sony had given up all the rights to all the CD-based games and the Super Disc itself to Sony. So, Sony could get all the profits made from any game for the Super Disc. This was a huge problem, as the control over licensing is how Nintendo aggressively became the top dog in the video game world in the first place. Without this profit, they were in big trouble. Also in 1991, the Philips CDI was released, and Nintendo saw this as a sign that CD-ROM technology was going to be big. So, Nintendo saw the Super Disk as a leech that was going to drain the profits of the Super NES without really giving anything back. Nintendo of America acted quickly and signed a deal with Philips. Philips would get Nintendo games on their console, and Nintendo would get a CD-ROM add-on made by Philips for their Super Nintendo. But this time, Nintendo would have complete license control over the games. They did not want to repeat their mistake with Sony. Nintendo also allowed Philips to make four games with Nintendo characters. The god-awful Zelda games and Hotel Mario. The next month, Nintendo showed off their Super Nintendo at the CES, or Consumer Electronics Show, in preparation to the Super Nintendo North American launch. At the CES, Sony showed off their PlayStation prototype. Now this was not the PlayStation that we know today. It was a different system that was spelt with two words separately. As planned, it could play Super Nintendo games and CD-ROM games, but could also play music, educational programs, and movies, much like the Philips CDI. Nintendo was starting to get really worried. With the launch of the Philips earlier that year, it looked like this thing was going to make Sony a lot of money. This along with the fact that Sony had all the rights to the Super Nintendo sound chip pushed them over the edge. So when Nintendo's turn came to confirm the Sony-Nintendo alliance, they instead said, well, we're making a CD-ROM attachment with Philips, because they're better. Now understandably, Sony was a little angry with this, as they were the ones that had to deal with Nintendo, not to mention that Philips was Sony's rival. Nintendo claimed that having two attachments wouldn't really hurt anybody. The reality of it is that Nintendo tried to use their deal with Philips to get control over the Sony games. But Sony didn't really budge. They were not going to give that up. So at this point, Sony was like, Okay, we have had it up to here with this BS. We are going to make our own console. So later that year, at the Tokyo International Electronics Show, Sony unveiled their new PlayStation. Again, with two words, which could stand alone from the Super Nintendo, but basically do the same thing as their earlier model. They planned to release it in 1992, six months before the Philips add-on for the Super Nintendo was going to be released. Eat that, Nintendo. As soon as 1992 starts, Nintendo officially calls off their deal with Sony, and Philips says that they will release their add-on during the Christmas season. Also, Sega shows off their Sega CD. So Sony was like, Oh yeah? Well, well, we're gonna make games for the Sega CD. How do you like that, Nintendo? You partner up with my rival and cut me off? Well, I'm gonna partner up with yours. So getting near the end of the year, publishers were like, Okay, WTF, guys. We cannot make games for all the systems if they keep changing. 
with all the different CD formats, consoles, and add-ons that people were pumping out, they were getting pretty fed up. To try to make a standard that everyone could follow, Nintendo's licensors met up with Nintendo and convinced them to work out an agreement not only with Sony, but Philips too. They all agreed on a single CD format. They also all agreed that Nintendo would get license over all the games for the PlayStation and the Philips Super Nintendo CD-ROM drive. Sony would get all non-game releases on the PlayStation, such as music, movies, or the educational programs. So, the SNES Nintendo Disc, aka Philips CD-ROM XA, was born. Each CD would come in its own case to prevent damage, prevent copying, and allow for memory storage in each game. All three companies decided to scrap their old add-ons and make a new add-on together to play these discs called the Super NES Nintendo Disk Drive, which would be a 32-bit add-on. This was most likely to compete with the upcoming Panasonic 3DO, Atari Jaguar, and the Sega 32X. It would look much like a second Super Nintendo attached to the bottom, and would be connected through the EXT port, as well as through a wire connected to a special cartridge in the Super Nintendo slot. Later that year, Nintendo announced the Super FX chip, so the new 32-bit add-on would have to be upgraded to be even better than the FX chip, which delayed it even more. In 1993, Nintendo finally releases the Super Nintendo add-on specs, and it is set for release in fall 1994 for 200 to 300 US dollars. It was rumored that a new Final Fantasy, Zelda, Mario, and Street Fighter 2 was in development for it. Other games that were said to be released were Seventh Guest, Robocop, and Cosmic Osmo. Before the end of the year, Nintendo said, well, you know that CD-ROM add-on that we've been talking about so long? Well, forget about that. Any CD system attached to the Super Nintendo would be really limited. This was probably due to the slow CPU of the Super Nintendo. This decision was probably also due to the mild interest people were showing in the Sega CD, not to mention all the trouble that this add-on was giving all the companies. Anyways, they said, we're making the Ultra 64, so don't you worry about that Super Nintendo add-on. Of course, the Ultra 64 later became the Nintendo 64, which we all know and love. So, Sony, Philips, and Nintendo all tossed the CD-ROM add-on, and that was the end of that. Some games that were originally going to be released for the system apparently were converted to be used with the Super Nintendo, such as Secret of Mana. So what really came out of this? Nintendo really didn't get anything, except they were convinced that CD sucked, and lost many of its fans' trust. It is possible, however, that the creation of Donkey Kong Country, easily the best-looking game of the 16-bit era, was done to show its fans that Nintendo did not need CDs or a 32-bit console to make great-looking games. Philips got to trick people into buying some Zelda and Mario games for the Philips CDI. Sony probably got the best deal out of this. They got a whole lot of experience with the gaming industry, and in the end decided that Though the gaming industry was profitable, they didn't need anybody's help. They set out to make their own 32-bit console, and the PlayStation that we all know today was born. So I hope you guys enjoyed my history of the Super Nintendo CD. Now I'd like to end with a popular quote from Nintendo Power from back whenever the Super Nintendo CD was cancelled. that says, The next time when someone tells you that CD-ROM is the wave of the future, Tell them that the future doesn't belong to the snails. This has been Silver Mongoose, and remember, classic gaming never gets old.